So in this video, we'll be taking a look at the Cube Mix Plus. Now, this has the Intel Kaby Lake M3 dual core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigs of SSD, and a 10.6 a full HD display. Now this is an interesting tablet because the closest thing I can compare this to is a Microsoft Surface Pro 4, which is a hell of a lot more expensive than this. So I wanna see whether the people over in China, over at Cube, have managed to make a great product. So let's go ahead and get into this. So this is how I received it from Gearbest. It comes in this big white box. And when you get into it, you are immediately presented with the Cube Mix Plus. So like most Chinese tablets, they have this dual screen protector. So this one's a translucent material. And then when you peel that off, you will then have a standard screen protector beneath protecting the screen. So you have an old school DC 12 volt in, one micro USB 3.0 port, one USB 3.0 type C port, which also handles data and charging one micro SD card reader, and one headphone and mic jack. And on the other side, you have stereo speakers. Something I didn't expect to see was this 12 volt US power supply. You also get some documentation in English on how to set up the tablet for the first time. And at the same time, I did also get the keyboard. So the keyboard just comes in a plain white box. And when you take that out there, you'll find one QWERTY keyboard. So this isn't included with the tablet, but it's well worth picking one up. So I originally started out by doing an unboxing video, but then I found that it wasn't charging. And I thought it had something to do with the charge block because it might've been the adapter I was using because this is a US power supply. Um, and maybe it just wasn't working with the adapter that I had. Um, however, for whatever reason, it wouldn't charge. So as the USB Type-C port handles data and charging, I thought I'd just go ahead and use that with one of the cables that I had available. However, as you can see here, when I plug in the charger to the bog standard Type-C cable that I had, it wouldn't charge, which I thought was a little bit odd, but then I realized there are different standards in the USB Type-C. So luckily my Nintendo Switch also charges via Type-C. And when I plugged that in, it just worked. So clearly you need to have a premium charge cable. So it's something to consider. I will leave a link in the description to where you pick one of those up. But if you do already own Type-C cables, you might wanna consider whether they'll work with this device. So when you first turn on this tablet, you will find that there is already a user profile created called Cube, which means you don't have to go through the setup process, which is really handy if English is your first language. However, if it isn't, you might find it slightly frustrating. So when you first log in, you will find that it comes with nothing on it. The only thing you will notice is that the regional settings will be set to China. So that's super simple to change. And all you need to do is right hand click on the date and time go into adjust date and time and set your region to the country that you are in. Also, you will find that there is about 110 gig available um, out of the 118 gig. Now on mine, I've got 86 gig available, but that's because I've installed some software to show you guys. And you will also find that in system properties, you have an activated version of Windows. You don't really notice it being an issue nowadays, but it's just worth checking anyway. You have the bog standard Windows 10 software installed. As you can see on mine, I've installed the full version of Word and well, Office, uh, but you do get all of the sort of standard apps that do come pre-installed, but you won't find any bloatware. In order to have a good tablet, you need a good display, and Cube have definitely done that. They've actually taken the Surface Pro display out of one of the older models and put it in their tablet. Now, it isn't laminated, which is a shame, but it doesn't really matter too much. As you can see here, there's a gap of about one or two mil, but it's not really noticeable unless you plan on using it at really odd angles. The one thing that I will say about this is that it isn't that bright. I was kind of expecting it to be brighter. I do have a Chewy tablet that has the same display and it does seem a little bit dimmer on this model, but that might be something to do with the settings that I have to disable. Sometimes they put energy saving modes in these, but I haven't been able to find it yet. The other area that I've been really impressed by is the touch panel. So I find it to be really locked in. Now I have tried other tablets before and it's always been kind of hit and miss with touch panels, but I found that whatever they put in this is really good. You feel really locked in. Um, when you're typing away, it doesn't tend to miss a click. Uh, but overall, I think it just feels like a really premium device when you're using it. 
We have two cameras installed on this device, one rear 5 megapixel autofocus camera, which actually takes an okay image. It's not the worst I've seen on a tablet and it's definitely not the best, but in this price point, it's actually a nice little extra that I wasn't really expecting. On the front, however, you get that bog standard 2 megapixel camera. And the one thing that does kind of bug me is the symmetry of the camera because it, it is slightly off center, uh, which makes it look slightly odd. Uh, however, I presume that's because the five megapixel camera takes up the space there. But as far as the image is concerned, it's all right. It's, it's nothing special. It'll do for um, on Skype or as a quick selfie. It's just not very good in low light. Also, here is some footage from the front facing camera and you can also hear the microphone. One of my biggest bugbears of a lot of modern tablets is the fact that they don't come with wireless AC. Now I'm not going to go too much into the detail about what AC is, but essentially it means that you're able to download a lot quicker. And the fact that it's dual band means it can adapt better to interference and it just means you get a better overall experience in my opinion. So I just wanted to very quickly show you that this tablet does have Wi-Fi AC and it is dual band. So I'm going to launch Internet Explorer, which I got to point out works really well on this processor. Normally when you have one of the Cherry Trail type processors, it's very slow and it takes ages to render the page. But with having this KB Lake, it's very quick. So I want to go to speed test and I just want to run a quick download and upload test. So I sped that up so you didn't have to sit through it, but as you can see, I'm getting 73 meg download and 21 upload. Bearing in mind that my internet connection is limited to 70 meg download and 20 meg upload, I would say that's a pretty decent speed. And I'm pretty far away from my router as well. So if you do have a high speed internet connection and you do do a lot of downloading or uploading, then this is definitely the tablet for you. So on that port, I want to check out what the transfer speeds are like. So I have my handy USB type C USB stick. And I've got a couple of files already on here. So I just want to see how well it transfers over. So that is a 500 meg file and it's a raw GoPro file. So yeah, definitely getting USB 3.0 speeds. Uh, there's another one, 200 meg. So it's doing about 113 megabytes per second, which is adequate for a USB 3.0 port. So I'm pretty happy with that. The next test will be whether it can actually power a hard drive. So I have my external hard drive, which is a Lassie, I don't know how you say that, Lassie, rugged, one terabyte mechanical hard drive and I've changed the cable to a type C. So I'm just going to see whether it is able to power the device. Definitely recognizes it. And yeah, works fine. No problems there. So you might be thinking, why did I bother doing that test? But the amount of tablets that I've used that aren't able to power an external hard drive is ridiculous. So it's nice to know that the Cube Mix Plus is able to handle it. So a thing that I get asked quite a bit on these Chinese tablets are whether they're any good for video editing. Now, I would definitely say if you are running the Cherry Trail processors, that is a big no-no. They are useless for that. In fact, they're renowned for being really slow when it comes to video editing. So what I thought I would do on this one is run that raw GoPro footage through GoPro Studio to see whether um, it can handle it. So I have it already imported here. It's at 1 minute 11 seconds. I want it to remove the fisheye and I want the quality to be high. So we're going to see how long that takes. Okay. 
Okay, so that took about a minute and a half, and what I want to do now is export it and see how quickly it can do that. So exporting at 1080p came in at just over a minute, so that was far quicker than 4K. So if you are planning on using this for video editing, food for thought, maybe stick with 1080 and have a much more pleasant experience. So it handled video editing well, how about photo editing? So I've taken a photo this morning and I want to import it into Photoshop to see how well Photoshop handles some of the more intensive tasks. So the first thing I want to try is liquify. Liquify can sometimes slow down Photoshop because when it renders this onto the image, um, if you have a lower powered processor, it struggles to change the image in the way that you've set it to. So that was quite quick, had no problems there. Let's try adding on some styles. Let's try wind for the sake of it. No problems there either. And then let's export it. So let's quick export as a PNG file. There we go, it's having to think about it. And there we go. So that took a few seconds to come through, but overall, pretty decent experience. Um, I'm not gonna go through too many features of Photoshop. If there's something you wanna see in Photoshop, if it can do, I'll gladly do it. Just let me know in the comments section below. So one of the things I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did was the stylus support. So I picked this up from Gearbest for about 10, 12 pounds, something like that. It was pretty cheap anyway. And I wasn't really expecting much because I've used um, styluses before and they've not been very good. But on this tablet, it's actually quite reasonable. Now, the way this works is it doesn't have a battery. It picks it up off the technology in the screen. So as you can see, I'm about just short of a centimeter away and you can see on the screen that it's registering that the stylus is there which then gives me palm rest support as well so once this registers on the screen you can rest your palm down and it's only going to register what the stylus does so then that means you can use multiple tools to then be able to draw and make notes so some of the fun ones are things like sketchpad so this is what i've been messing about with and as you can see on here, I've set some uh, some pencil marks on here and I've been using the brush strokes to be able to do light as well as dark strokes. Um, and I've drawn a little picture with pen here and I can just go ahead and add to that. Obviously, as you can see, my artistic talents are amazing, um, but it just gives you a another way to interact with your device. Now, one of the ways I would suggest using this is if you are planning on using this for writing notes or um, you have to go through documents quickly, you can use OneNote to be able to highlight or draw or add to um, really quickly and you can also convert it to text. So I'm gonna just type, I'm just gonna write two words. Uh, let's just set it to black. And in this case, I'm gonna do individual letters. And on this one, I'm gonna join it up. And that should, there we go, yeah, automatically recognize what I'd written and turned it into text, which is now editable. And then you can do additional things, like I could highlight that if I wanted to, um, I can add to that. And it's just a cool little extra feature that I wouldn't expect on a tablet around this price point. So the keyboard is quite a nice design. It's a full QWERTY keyboard with function keys. 
It's an all metal design. It has a magnetic catch that the tablet clips onto. And on the sides, you will find that there are two USB 2.0 ports. When you do attach the tablet and open up the lid, you will find that the keyboard rises, which makes it much more useful for typing. The one area I would say it lets it down is the trackpad. All of these Chinese tablets come with this really weak trackpad, which supports gestures. I do have a video on how to disable the trackpad, so I'll leave a link in the description. By doing that, it makes the trackpad a lot more usable. So to wrap it up, I gotta say, I'm massively impressed with this tablet. So for 350 quid or 380 quid or whatever it is, you're getting the Intel Kaby Lake processor, you're getting four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, you're getting a 10 inch IPS display, you're getting stylus support, 128 gig SSD, and you are getting wireless AC. Now, if we're comparing it to the closest thing that matches that, that would be the Microsoft Surface Pro 4, which comes in around 550 to 600 pounds, depending on where you get it from. So I have to say that this is pretty much Now, a don't bargain. get me wrong, you do get a couple of drawbacks with that. It probably is a little bit heavier than a Surface Pro 4. Um, you've only got the two megapixel front and five megapixel rear cameras. That really isn't a deal breaker for me. I would not pay an additional 200 pounds to have a slightly better camera and to have a slightly lighter machine. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if you were going to go out and you needed a device that is a little bit more powerful than a Cherry Trail processor, then this would be the tablet to buy. So you may have noticed I didn't do any gaming. So I do apologize if you were expecting some gaming shots in this. There are plenty of other videos online showing that. I do plan on doing a video later on when I've got a few more interesting games to play. But the purpose of this review was to go through all of the major features that this has on it and to show you what it's capable of doing. So if you do have any questions or if there is anything that you want to see, leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to either answer them or do a follow-up video. But until next time, thank you.